Good evening and welcome to this night prayer at St Andrew's, Horton of Skern. We'll be using the Worship at Home booklet and you can print a copy from the web address that's showing. And the Bible passages that we'll be reading this evening are from Psalm 50, from Micah chapter 6 and from Matthew chapter 12. beginning with a verse from Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 27. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. Please feel free to join in with me with uh, anything at all. I won't know, nor will anybody else except you and the Lord. So join in with whatever you fancy. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Well, I hope you've had a good day today, uh, that it's been a pleasant day for you. It's been a, one or two spits and spots of rain here, but uh, I believe that it was a bit drier uh, over nearer Darlington. But let's think about what we have done today, who we've met, our conversations we've had, the things we've done. And let's thank the Lord that we've been able to do these things. And perhaps we've got some things left on our list to look at tomorrow. So let's just sort out what it is we've done uh, so that we can have a a peaceful time with our Lord this evening. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Our psalm this evening is uh, some verses from Psalm 50. We're starting at verse 3 reading to seven and then moving to verse 14. So Psalm 50, verse three. Our God comes and will not be silent. A fire devours before him and around him a tempest rages. He summons the heavens above and the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me this consecrated people who made a covenant, covenant with me by sacrifice. And the heavens proclaim his righteousness, for he is a God of justice. Listen, my people, and I will speak. I will testify against you, Israel. I am God, your God. And on to verse 14. Sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High. And we say together, glory to the Father, to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the book of Micah, chapter 6. And it's the Lord's case against Israel. Chapter 6. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead my case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He's lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. And verse 6, the response. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? 
Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can almost hear frustration, can't you? God has done so much for the people of Israel, and yet they still wander away from him. Having said that, it's quite easy to get sidetracked, isn't it? It's fairly easy to put off till tomorrow the things that we don't have to do immediately. You can see why, can't you? Well, there's water running down the kitchen wall, so that phone call will have to wait. You need to do something about the water before everything's ruined. But what about another greyer situation? Shall I wash the floor as it's filthy or shall I go for a walk and then I won't see it and it won't bother me? You can see why God can get missed out, can't you? Out of sight, out of mind. That's what had happened to the people of Israel. They'd put him out of sight and out of mind. Remorse can kick in and we want to put things right. But how? How shall I come back to God? Well, the question was, shall I sacrifice calves, a thousand rams, sacrifice my firstborn? What does God actually require? Verse 8, he requires us to act justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Showy sacrifices don't work. It's what's inside that makes the difference to our relationship with God. And our third reading is from Matthew chapter 12. And we're starting to read at verse 38 as far as verse 42. And it's the sign of Jonah. Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And now something greater than Solomon is here. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you remember the story of Jonah? God wanted him to go to Nineveh to tell the people to change their ways and return to God. Jonah was more than frightened at the prospect and ran away. But we can't hide from God. We can put our head in the sand like an ostrich and pretend that God doesn't see us. But just as the ostrich's bottom is sticking up in full view, so we're in full view of God. Wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we're in full view of God. God will have his way with us sooner or later. Sooner is far better. Jonah eventually did as he was told and the people of Nineveh were saved. Jesus, the Son of God, had a similar experience to Jonah in one sense. He died, he was buried for three days, he rose again. We, the people, can be saved when we listen to the words of Jesus. 
When we realise our wayward ways, we can be saved. When we ask for the forgiveness of God, we can be saved. Let's remember the sacrifice that Jesus made once for each of us and let him be part of our everyday life. Washing the floor can wait, but let's not put off till tomorrow what God wants us to do today, whatever that might be. Amen. We come to our time of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, help us to keep you in full sight and not to relegate you to our head in the sand. May we seek what you would have us do in our lives. And may we do that instead of running away and hoping you forget about it. May your will for us be first in our lives. Amen. And from this week's Little Net Extra, the prayer for the sixth Sunday of Trinity. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray for those in our July prayer list. We pray for John, Jane, Iris, Carol, Carol, Paul, Sharon, Catherine, Karen, Anne, Susan, Geoffrey, Sophia, John, Pamela, Tony, Diane, Christopher, Simon, Colin, Mike, and we add Christine. And we pray for the family of those who have died recently, family and friends of Jesse Watson, William Harrison, Norma Haney, Dora Appleton, Frederick Nicholson, George Greener, Johnny Ian McCraw, Marion Holmes and Christopher Sturgeon. We ask for your blessing upon all these people, that they may all feel your comfort. We ask it in your name, Lord. Amen. And from our church family today, we especially pray for Ken and Judith Monkman, that you will bless them and keep them safe. And for those living in our parish in Deepdale Way and Deorna Court. And we pray for Christians abroad, and in particular, TEN, which is Transform Europe Network COVID-19 Relief Fund. We pray for TEN's COVID-19 Relief Fund, set up to assist partners in Eastern Europe facing serious economic consequences as a result of the closure of businesses, restricted travel, and loss of employment affecting church members. Partners are bringing food to the hungry and using social media and online meetings to stay in touch with their communities. We ask your blessing upon all, Lord, through this very, very difficult time. Amen. And join in with me with the following prayers. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain or in distress of any kind, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A time now when we can bring our own prayers to the Lord. Whatever's on your heart.
Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together, thinking of the Sunday services we've had recently over the past few weeks looking at different aspects of the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. We say together, the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. So thank you for spending uh, a short time with us this evening at night prayer here at um, St Andrew's Horton Lascern. And you can join us again tomorrow at nine in the morning for morning prayer and seven tomorrow night for night prayer. So I hope the rest of your evening goes well and that you have a good night's sleep. Good night. God bless. <laughs>